was just talking to someone earlier about how I feel like Confluence is a family reunion. It just keeps getting so much bigger and better every year. I'm just so happy to be here addressing you today. So today, I'm going to shed some light on how to build evergreen custom audiences for your Facebook ad campaigns. Now, custom audiences are so powerful that they're still so often overlooked. And that's maybe because they seem daunting or maybe people have the wrong approach. So I felt compelled today to reveal my strategies and hopefully inspire you to start building custom audiences for yourself. Now I designed my presentation to be a guide for you, like a resource, almost like a cheat sheet, because I know that when I go to conferences, I want takeaways. And so I made it my goal to provide you with takeaways that you can put into practice immediately. So let me explain what I mean by the word evergreen. So evergreen is defined as being sustainable and long lasting. And therefore, your evergreen custom audiences and your content should be sustainable and long-lived and fresh. And in order for it to be relevant, there has to be many layers to your targeting. So whether or not you have Facebook ads experience, I want you to think of this as your roadmap for success. And I'm confident that if you follow my power tips, you'll be able to put the right message in front of the right people at the right time. So let's dive in. Oops, meant to do that. So, during a recent interview, Sheryl Sandberg from Facebook said, businesses are no longer asking if they should market on social. They're asking how. And that's a powerful statement. Well, Facebook is a perfect entry point. Facebook is a marketing powerhouse, and its targeting capabilities are just truly unmatched. And Facebook ads are ideal for reaching your target audience. The good news is that Facebook places a lot of emphasis on relevancy meaning that Facebook's going to reward your ads with more visibility in the newsfeed if they are well targeted and if you're creative and your copy are on point. The last thing you want to be is annoying to your audience. You don't want to be disruptive. When your audience sees your ads, you want them to think, this is exactly what I need. Oh my gosh, how do they know? I can't believe they exist. This is so helpful. I must share this with my friends and family. So consider this. Facebook ads work better when they're in a funnel. And I know this is really nothing new, probably heard this before, but it's so true, meaning that your Facebook ads should follow a very logical and natural sequence. Sorry, this goes kind of fast. Okay, so this is what a Facebook funnel looks like. At the top of the funnel, you have attraction. You have to attract an audience, warm them up, get them to know that you exist, and then engage them with relevant evergreen content. Maybe they come to your website. Maybe they sign up for your newsletter. You want to engage and build a relationship with them and then eventually convert them into, coming, into becoming customers for your brand. And then ultimately nurture them with content so they become advocates. So kind of think of this funnel like dating. You don't just go into a bar, meet someone for the first time, and ask them to marry you, right? It just doesn't work that way. So instead, you want to warm them up, attract them, get them to think that you're cool, get them to know you exist, flirt with them, build a relationship, and then ultimately they'll be committed to you. So you have to figure out where your audience is in the stage of this funnel and then match the appropriate content to them. So I love this quote from Roger. He said, you want to be on some people's minds, some people you don't. And that is so practical and still relevant today. And what he seems to be saying is that not everybody is going to be in the market for your product or service. But that's okay because you don't need to target everybody. It's impossible to target everybody. Even if you had the largest ad budget in the world, it's impossible. You don't need to though. But what you can do is you can reach the most relevant people to you by creating custom audiences. So custom audiences are essentially just groups of people that are connected to your brand in some way. So instead of just hoping that people reach your ads, why not just cut to the chase and reach people that are already familiar with you? And you can do this with custom audiences. So there are four types of custom audiences I'm going to highlight today, four that I use frequently. Email custom audiences, groups of people connected to your email list. Website custom audiences, people that have been to your website. Engagement custom audiences, people that have engaged with your ads in some way. My favorite lookalike audiences. 
So I had the pleasure of being the social media chair of Confluence this year, and custom audience targeting was a really integral part of my strategy all the way dating back since January. So I thought it'd be fun today if I showed you ways that I incorporated all four of these types of custom audiences into my campaign for Confluence. So let's dive in and start with email custom audiences. These are simply people connected to your email list. And this is a really great tactic if you're just starting out. So email list targeting can help you grow your Facebook likes, can help you increase your audience with relevant people. And let me show you how I did that for Confluence. So in order to access custom audiences, you're gonna to wanna to fire up your business manager. And under the assets tab, you'll select audiences. And then under the create audience dropdown, you'll select custom audience. And then you'll be prompted with all types of audiences that Facebook will allow you to build. So for an email list, I chose customer file. And then I uploaded an email list from our Confluence MailChimp account directly into Facebook. And what Facebook does is it hashes the data and it matches those email addresses with Facebook users. So I uploaded that list and created a name for it that I can remember. And then I served them these ads. These are page-like ads promoting confluence, letting people know that, you know what, you're on our email list, you might as well like our Facebook page because then you'll be privy to new news and information about confluence. So this is a really great way to get the most relevant people connected to you to also like your Facebook page, and you can do this too. Email list targeting also allows you to make your offers exclusive. I love this, and this is a really great way to promote brand loyalty. So for example, here I created an email custom audience of our 2015 Confluence attendees. And I served them these ads, an ads promoting an alumni sale, letting them know that they're eligible <coughs> to receive a discount on their ticket price this year, a $50 discount. I made this ads exclusive <coughs> to them. And next year I'll probably make these ads exclusive to you, so stay tuned, you'll probably see these in 2017. So some power tips for email custom audiences. You always want to have at least 20 people in your audience. That's Facebook's minimum in order for you to create one. You always want to use one identifier when uploading your contacts. So you can upload either email addresses or phone numbers, but you can't upload a mix of both. Now, some things you never want to do, you don't want to forget to manually update your lists. Facebook will not do this for you. So anytime there's a change in your email list, you have to do it and update it yourself. But the good news is it's pretty easy to do. And you don't want to overlap your email list because essentially you'll just be competing with yourself. So if you can, try to segment your email lists. You might have different people in your audiences, different demographics that you want to segment and target. Kind of like I did for Confluence. I segmented our alumni and I segmented our email newsletter people. It's really helpful to zero in on the right people that way. And try to include a lead magnet or a special offer People are going to provide you with their email address so you can retarget them. So provide them something valuable. Provide them something that they're going to enjoy and that they would want to give you their email address for, like a freebie, downloadable white paper, something of value, and you'll see much higher click-through rates. Okay, so what if you don't have enough people in your email list to start an email custom audience? Well, then you can start immediately using website custom audiences. And these are audiences of people that have visited certain pages on your website. So, before you start using website custom audiences, you have to install the Facebook Pixel on every page of your site. Now, Facebook Pixel is just simply a piece of code that allows you to start collecting data. And every user ID, every ad account, has its own unique pixel. And this is what it looks like. It's definitely not the prettiest thing in the world, right? I mean, when I first saw it, I was like, what in the world is this? But the good news is you don't have to know what any of this stuff means. You just need to know where to put it and why it's used. And at the end of this presentation, I'm gonna include a video demonstrating me placing this pixel on Confluence's site, step-by-step -step instructions and the free tools that I used to do. And it took about five minutes. So if you need some further instructions, check out that video. Okay, so once the pixel is installed on all pages of the site, you can start building website custom audiences. And they allow you to isolate specific visitors. This is very powerful. For example, in this case, I chose website traffic. <coughs> then you can choose a list of people who have visited any page on your site. 
some pages but not others, or people who haven't come in a certain period of time. So for this example, I chose to create a website custom audience of people that have been to the Confluence blog post page in the past 60 days. You can choose any duration from 1 to 180 days. So in this case, I wanted to create an audience of Confluence people that have seen the, seen the blog and been there in the past 60 days. And then I serve them these ads. These people have already engaged with Confluence. They've already read information about our event. And I really thought it'd be great to tell our great lineup of speakers to them and get some excitement, build some hype around Confluence this year, and get them excited about registering and promote the dates. This is a really great way to keep these people and these audiences evergreen with fresh content. Website custom audiences also allow you to include and exclude specific visitors. This is extremely powerful, and this is something that I use in probably every single one of my campaigns. Let me show you how. So here is a latest blog post from Confluence. Get the deets, everything you need to know about attending Confluence this year. So I made it my goal to promote this blog post to the most relevant people. So what I did was I created another custom audience of people who've already read this blog post. I just entered the URL and there you can do URL equals or URL contains, but here I did URL contains people who've been to this blog post. I'll show you why. Then I served these ads to people who usually come to the Confluence blog post who've been there in the past 60 days, but I excluded the people that have already seen that post. This is a really great way to save money and to make sure you're not overlapping your audiences. I wanted to get the right people who usually engage with the blog to read our newest post. And you can do this too. So another thing is that website custom audiences also allow you to regain lost customers. Let me show you how I did this with Confluence. So here, I chose to create one single audience using inclusive and exclusive targeting. So I created an audience of people who have seen the registration page, but bounced. And then I created another custom audience to exclude, an audience of people who see the thank you page, meaning that they register. And then I serve them these ads. Ads to people who, for some reason, they came to the registration page and they didn't fill out, they didn't complete their registration. Something stopped them. And that's okay. Just because people don't convert right away doesn't mean that they're not going to still be interested. So I provided them with some more value about Confluence, showing them 39 reasons, 39 valuable reasons why they should attend in hopes to get them to reconsider and come back. So this stuff is really easy, right? This is stuff that you can do right away. It's might take a little bit of planning in advance, but it's something that you can start doing as soon as next week. But there's some more that I'm really excited about. So earlier this summer, Facebook announced some really cool updates to their custom audiences tool, some updates that I think are really game-changing. Website, ooh, this thing looks kind of bad. Website custom audiences now allow you to target based on the quality of the visit. That's really huge, and that's something that I've been waiting around to happen for a really long time. And the bottom line is that not all website visitors are created equally, right? You might have a visitor that comes to your site for one to two seconds and bounces, or you might have a visitor that comes to your site and spends 10 to 20 minutes on the site. Those people aren't created equally, so you want to be able to isolate them. And Facebook now allows us to isolate people based on time, how much time they spent on the site, and frequency, how often they've been to your site within a certain time frame. That's really great. So let me show you how I did this. Here's a custom audience I built based on time. So Facebook will allow you to build an audience of people who have the top 5, 10, or 25% active users on your site. So for example, if you have 10,000 people that visit your site in 30 days, 25% of that would be 2,500 people, one being the most active user. So I built that audience. And then I created another audience based on frequency, people who visit the registration page, an audience of people who've seen our registration page at least two times in the past 30 days, using both mobile and desktop. And I combined these audiences and served them these ads, saying, hey, we know that you've been to our site, you've engaged with our content, you spent some time on the site, you're still eligible for an early bird discount. I promoted a sense of urgency, reminding them that, hey, 
last day for this discount. We really want you to come, though. We know you've expressed interest. We would love to have you here. So building custom audiences on time and frequency are extremely powerful. It's something that I'm going to continue to start doing all the time. So some power tips for website custom audiences. So you always want to double check that your Facebook pixel is working. So if you're going to spend the time to put it on there, you want to make sure it works. And there's some really great free tools that allow you to do this. You always want to refresh your website custom audiences after 180 days. You can build an audience for 1 to 180 days. And having this duration is truly what makes these campaigns evergreen. A good rule of thumb is that I like to refresh my audiences probably around 30 to 60 days, but it really just depends on your sense of urgency and the type of campaign. But after 180 days, they will expire, so you have to create new ones. But that's a good thing. So you never want to assume that all website visitors are created equally. They're not. So you want to try and segment based on time and frequency. You never want to forget bold call to action buttons. People like to be guided on what you want them to do. So if you want them to register now, promote that sense of urgency. If you want them to learn more, describe what they're going to be learning. Never forget to include bold call to actions on your ad itself and in the copy. Now, if you can, try to drive people to helpful blog posts. By helping people and providing value, they're ultimately going to keep you top of mind. Maybe they're not ready to convert right away, but when they are, they're more than likely to remember you because you helped them. And of course, target based on quality over quantity. I always stress quality over quantity. Okay, so the third type of custom audience, which is rather new, that I really like to use, are engagement custom audiences. And these are audiences based on people who've interacted with some of your ads. So engagement custom audiences allow you to retarget your video viewers. This is awesome. Video is huge. There are over 100 million hours of video watched on Facebook per day. With video, there's the rare occasion when the public can be engaged on a level beyond flash if they have a sentimental bond with the product. And the sights and sounds and motions of video can help connect people emotionally. So if you're running video ads, I really don't want you to miss out on this massive opportunity to re-engage them. Let me show you how. So here you'll select engagement on Facebook. And Facebook will let you do this on video, feed, or canvas ads. So for this example, I chose video. And you can retarget people who've watched at least five seconds, 10 seconds, 25%, 50%, 75%, or over 95% of your video. Why not? It's such a great opportunity. So in this example, I chose to target and create an audience of people who viewed at least 75% of our Confluence promo video within the past 30 days. And then I served them these ads, reminding them, we know you engaged with our video, you've seen Confluence, you've been to the website, we really want you to come, promoting Confluence to people engaged with our video. You can do this too. Engagement custom audiences also allow you to retarget people who have opened your lead forms and your Canvas ads. So if you're running lead generation ads, if someone opens it or clicks on it or interacts it, you can start collecting those audiences. Maybe those people left and didn't submit for a reason, so try and re-engage them, hook them back. You can also do this with your Canvas ads. And I really think this is just the beginning. You have just these three options right now, video, lead, and Canvas ads. But I think in the future, you're going to see so many more opportunities for Facebook's tools to let us engage even more ad sets, maybe even engage people who have commented on posts or shared. The opportunities are truly endless. So some power tips for engagement custom audiences. You always want to check that your advanced mode is turned on. And so when you go start to build these, you'll be prompted to turn it on. So make sure that's on. Try and mix and match engagement types. What's really cool is this is brand new. Before, when you create video engagement, you can only do one audience per video. But now, if you have multiple video ads running, you can create one audience based on people who viewed multiple videos, multiple percentages of those videos. So it's really nice to be able to mix and match them. So you never want to take a shotgun approach with sales. You don't ever want to sell to a cold customer overnight. You have to warm them up with your content. Never underestimate the power of video. It's huge. And I really encourage you to continue using video ads. Video still reigns supreme 
in terms of all of the Facebook advertising options available. So really, don't underestimate video. And if you can, try to separate your high quality leads from your low quality leads. And when you do that, I really encourage you to increase your bid for a higher quality lead. You'll be able to eliminate wasted ad dollars and get the most bang for your buck that way. Okay, so, look-alike custom audiences. So these are essentially exactly what they sound like. Facebook will allow you to make an expanded audience based off of the same interests and hobbies, location, demographics of your custom audience. So for example, say you have an audience of men that live in New York City that love whiskey, love smoking, right? Facebook's then gonna take that audience and make another expanded audience of men that live in New York City that love whiskey and smoking. It's really cool. And let me show you a more relevant example. So here, I create a custom audience. You'll choose lookalike audience this time. And I created a custom audience based off of our 2015 Confluence attendees. Facebook basically allowed me to clone last year's audience. And then I, and then I serve them these ads. Ads saying, hey, we know you're probably like last year's audience. You have the same interests. They did the same jobs. We want you to know about Confluence. Check us out, we really want you to come. Very, very powerful. So with lookalike custom audiences, you always want to have at least 100 people in your seat audience in order for you to run them. That is Facebook's minimum. You always want to layer and refine your targeting. Mix and match your custom audiences. You can mix website custom audiences with email, with lookalikes. It's a really cool and really powerful way to narrow in on the right people. Now, you never want to forget to check your relevance scores. Facebook will give you a relevance score based on one to 10. Check those scores, see how your ads are performing. Facebook's delivery insights will give you information on to how you can improve because what gets measured ultimately gets improved. And you never want to forget to test different headlines, images, and copy because really, if your creative cannot capture the attention of your audience, then none of this really matters. Right? <coughs> so you want to have very strong, powerful creative. And if you can, <coughs> try to create lookalikes based off of your email lists, kind of like I did for Confluence. That's a thing. You can do that. It's really cool. You can also create lookalikes based off of your Facebook page fans. I really strongly urge you to try these things, to try using all four of these types of custom audiences into your campaign. So custom audiences have very specific terms of service. And when you start to build them, Facebook will prompt you with a policy. This policy is really long, it's really boring, and I guarantee no one here is probably gonna read it. So I figured that I would highlight the two most important takeaways. One, you can only use data that you have received permission to use. So in other words, you can't scrape public data off of websites, you can't go to Facebook and start collecting random email addresses. You have to use information that you have permission to use, or else it's very illegal. Two, you can't keep audiences that have opted out of your campaigns. So anytime your email list changes, you have to go in manually and refresh it. It's pretty easy to do, but if you don't do that, again, very <coughs> illegal. Okay, so let's recap. Facebook ads work better in a funnel. We all know this. You wanna be able to put the right message in front of the right people at the right time. And always think back to that funnel. Engage a relevant audience. I strongly urge you to stress quality over quantity. Keep your content and your audiences fresh. That will enable you to keep your campaigns evergreen. And always use precision targeting. The ability to use inclusive and exclusive targeting will help you truly zero in on the right people and eliminate wasted ad dollars. Oh, my bad. And once you collect leads, you want to nurture them with evergreen content so they become long-lived advocates for your brand. So my favorite industry blogger, John Wilmer, said, your focus should be on spending the least amount of money for the highest quality fans, period. And I agree. And you can start doing this. And I really encourage you to use custom audiences. I hope I've inspired you to start using some. And don't forget that you don't have to go crazy. Maybe start with just building an email custom audience at first, and then a website one. And you can always get more creative and adventurous and scale from there. But I really encourage you to start using them.
And then tomorrow, Steve Hammer is going to come talk to us about social media analytics and help us understand the ROI of our campaigns. So thank you, guys. I think we probably still have some time for questions. Woo! It seems like there are a lot of things to know for uh, social media. It's becoming more and more complicated. And this is just Facebook. Um, the question is, for your average business, what are your options when evaluating how to handle social media? Great. That's a really interesting question because, you know, before, three years ago, when I started social media, many businesses, you know, were doing it. They had their marketing person, their PR person, the person in charge of all marketing handling their Facebook all their social media pages. And truly, it's become a full-time job. It's becoming more and more a full-time job. I mean, OU now offers social media 101 marketing classes. That's insane to me, and it's really cool. So I really think all businesses should have someone truly dedicated to their social media full-time. And I know it's really hard. You don't you know, always have the biggest budget in the world for that, but there are also many opportunities to outsource it, especially things technical like Facebook advertising, advanced strategies. Those are things that you can easily outsource. But I think it's really important to have somebody assigned and really take care of your social media presence on a day-to-day -day basis and truly engage with the audience in yeah. order to do it well. Yes, because there's the organic and the paid side as yes. well. Gosh, there's a lot. Um, so we had a question through the hashtag ConfluenceCon, uh, sorry, by at mentioning ConfluenceCon. And the question was, uh, it was from Melissa Megginson, and it was, um, what does the percentage number mean next to the, the lookalike audiences. Um, you know what I'm yep, talking about? Yeah, right. there's, there's kind of like a scale. I think it's like one to 20 or something. So basically, lookalike audiences, uh, they're on a scale. And on the left, you have similarity. And on the right, you have reach. So when you build a lookalike audience, if you move it more to the right, you're going to be optimizing for reach. I encourage you to continually optimize for similarity. So keep that scale to the left as much as possible. because. The goal is to optimize for people with the same interests, demographics, similarity. So I always optimize the most for similarity. Okay. Any questions from the audience? Sir, at the back, the big boys. So the question is, would you suggest we put a pixel on every single SKU or product on our website or just just the main pages? Sure. Well, the Facebook base pixel code has to be installed on every page of your site so you can start collecting audiences and isolating different pages. <coughs> now, if you want to dive more into conversion tracking, you can add different standard events on different pages to collect conversions that way. So standard events don't have to be on all pages, but the base pixel does. And the base pixel will always fire first, and then the standard events will fire. And I could do a whole other presentation on just conversion tracking itself. But Facebook has some really good tutorials, and I'll include those in this deck also, some set up tutorials and free tools that you can use. So Sarah's going to be available here for the next yes. couple of days. I highly recommend, if you're getting into Facebook advertising, just grabbing her and having a word. 
Um, any other questions from the audience? Okay. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you guys sir. so much. I'll be happy to meet with anybody and talk to you during the break. Thank you so much. Quick reminder.